Hello out there, and the knife that's in front of you today is a very exciting one because this design is the brainchild of a close friend of mine in the community by the name of David. A lot of you might be aware of him because he goes by the name Blade Banter on his YouTube channel. And this is the Solaris. It is from his own knife company that he started up called Orion Knives. And so you can see the three stars uh, that signify Orion's belt. And they also are representative of his three triplet sons. So pretty cool. But more than that, it's just an awesome thing to, to have a friend in the community who mentions that he wants to design a knife to you over a year ago. And then you get to sort of go along with him somewhat, you know, like be privy to, to some of the, the process and the questions and the prototypes and get an understanding of what all that was. And anytime someone has a dream and they're willing to to do the work and put the time in to see it through from beginning to end it's an awesome thing so if nothing else happens and nothing else comes of it besides having uh, this knife here then i think it's been a huge success now that said this knife is available on kickstarter right now for a few more days that's why i'm trying to get this review out right now so that you guys can get a look at it and see if you want to jump in and get one of these yourself and the good news about it is it's actually been funded so it is going to get produced and it is going to go further than this so it is again just a very awesome thing so today we're going to go through the details of the knife i'm going to talk about the things i really like about it and some of the things that uh, maybe um, i didn't <laughs> but there aren't very many of those so it's an exciting thing in that regard because anytime you know a friend of mine or someone sends me something i'm just uh, like hopefully I like it because if I don't it's gonna suck to bash it and the good thing the good news here is that I'm really not gonna have to do that because a lot of the things about this knife really sort of hone in on on the preferences that I have as well All right so getting started with it for some size comparisons this is a little bit of a it's a large knife in a couple dimensions it has a pretty good height and then it has a good beefiness to it so it is a, a nice full-size folder so if we're taking a look at it next to, let's say, here's a Tenacious we have on the table. It's actually a pretty comparable size overall to the Tenacious. Glad I pulled that one out. <laughs> so we have the Tenacious here. Uh, the 943, it is the exact same length as, but you can see a big difference in just the general dimensions there. And actually, while we have it here, take a look at that. So just the width of this knife you know, a solid half inch. So compared to the 943, significantly thinner. So yeah, it does have a little bit of a chunk and a little bit of a heft to it. You know, bring in the mini griptilian, which is what we do here, much smaller, but just for comparison. And then the PM2, which by rule has to be in every video. So there you go, there you have it. So some size comparisons there. Um, yeah, the big thing that jumps out when it comes to dimension, getting back to it, is just that thickness. And this knife is a button lock, and the reason why when it comes to thickness, you know, that's sort of appropriate. You can see, like, the Protec Malibu, a little bit thinner, but the, the big thing, when we take a look on the inside, is that even though they're nested, we do have pretty much full liners here on the Solaris. So there's going to be a little bit of extra weight, a little bit of rigidity, too. And, you know, like, I'm... Throughout the process of David Blade Banter designing and and seeing this knife from a sketch to, to what we have in front of us today, uh, there were a couple conversations that I had with him where, you know, we chatted about things and maybe you can see it's not really all that clear in the light, 4.78 ounces, so um, 4.77. Um, there were a couple conversations that we had about the knife and he was, you know, asking me about things and, and going back and forth. What do you think of this? And I'm sure he did that with dozens of people. But um, but he and I, we've always had an affinity for the button lock, plunge lock, whatever you want to call it. We're, we're fans of it. And one thing that has always bothered me about like the inexpensive ones, the same way it bothers him, is that um, I hate the the movement in the lockup. You know, I talked about this with the Protec Malibu very recently, that the Malibu has a very good lockup. You know, it's very strong. And I've seen custom knives with button locks have movement. It's just frustrating, but I think it, it might be a, a lock that once it sets in, it, it develops a little bit of play, and it's really hard to... to to counteract that you just get stuck with it and so i think a lot of that extra weight and the rigidity here is intentional in that it just provides security and strength to the mechanism and and makes the whole knife overall very solid so what we have is a knife that feels like a work knife and 
I really like that about it. You know, I feel like even though this is a very pretty knife and it has some really nice features as far as aesthetics, um, it's definitely a knife that you're going to want to use. And once you start to use it, I think you'll just want to use it more. Getting into materials, what we have is a blade of a 14C28N. So I think it's a, a very good mid-grade steel. Our cutting edge is just over three inches total. So you can see three inches of cutting edge, 3.1. So... A little bit when it comes to blade to handle ratio a little bit of a uh, not an oddity but it's a it's a little bit skewed not quite as much and maybe I'll bring back the PM2 you can see the PM2 is you know very different in blade to handle ratio but um what it is really is the forward choil here the forward choil just creates a um, you know a, a bigger gap and so it just makes things a little bit different I like that personally so it, it works out really well for me. Getting back to 14C28N, um, I'm a fan of the steel. I've always liked what Kershaw has done with it uh, in their like USA made uh, knives. I've seen it more as a mid-grade steel than a budget steel, but it's one that I, I know that was able to get put on this knife in order to keep the pricing somewhat reasonable. So that's really good. When it comes to blade stamping, the only stamp that you see is that Orion Knives logo and then also 14C28N if I can get that in focus. So if we're talking about Kickstarter and what's available, and again, it's only for a few days, so I will link to it, guys. Check it out if you wanna take a look at this knife and, and jump in on that Kickstarter campaign. But there are two different blade finishes. This one is the satin. There's also a stone wash. Satin, uh, this knife has been gone through the pass around group a little bit. You can see some scratches on it. Uh, that's just going to happen with use. So if you have a problem with that, maybe the stone wash will cover it up a little bit better than the satin. Personally, I like the way this satin one looks. So um, I am going to be getting one and it will most likely be a satin one. So as we move on back, before we talk about the G10, I want to talk about the one area of the knife that is just a little bit awkward. And it's right here. It's what I really call the neck of the knife. Um, you know, there are a number of models in the past that I've had not issues with, but just questions concerning the way they're designed in that specific area. The Spyderco Brower is one that really jumps out at me in regards to it. But here it's, um, it's just a little bit odd visually, just the, the transition from the handle with this ramp to the blade and then the choil and exactly how you're supposed to use the knife. And once I answered the question for myself, it made perfect sense and everything was fine. But taking a look, let's just talk about forward choils for a second. Um, <laughs> getting the, the paramilitary two. So when you have a paramilitary two and you're looking at the forward choil, one thing I like the PM2 and also, actually I have it right here, the Domino, one of the reasons why the Domino is one of my favorite knives, period, is that you can use the knife and it makes sense to use the knife even without using the forward choil. You can utilize it in a number of different grip configurations, choking up, choking back, yada, 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 and your finger is never so far from the media that you're cutting without using the forward choil that it makes it weird, if that makes sense. It doesn't make it difficult to cut with when you don't use the forward choil. Some knives, and if you think about the CRKT Polar, if you're trying to use that without the forward choil, it, it doesn't make any sense. It almost it, it almost is a hindrance to, to try to use that knife without the forward choil. The PM2 is another one with a little bit of versatility. You know, you can use it choke back, you can choke up, which most people probably do. You know, a bunch of different hand configurations there. The only uh, awkward issue that I had with the Solaris here was I just wasn't sure exactly, you know, until I started using it, what I was supposed to do here. You know, and I tried for a bit to, to use it like this instead of, you know, choking up. And what I just found is that, that naturally, what at least for me, what's going to happen is I'm always going to use the forward choil. Some knives I don't like that. This one, it actually worked out pretty well. Even though there's this, um, this ridge here, uh, it is a very comfortable knife when you choke back like this on the ramp and you don't really need jimping because of the way that it's textured. So, I mean, that's good. And then when you choke up, it's comfortable as well because this little ridge here is not sharp. But it was just one of those things where, you know, I was trying to hold the knife like this and, and that just doesn't really work. I mean, like you can see how far away my finger is from where the actual cutting edge begins. You're going to want to choke up and, and use that forward choil. And there's plenty of space within here to get comfortable, you know, use a draw cut, whatever you want to do, however you want to hold the knife. So there's room for, for large hands as well. All right. Getting into the G10 and the handle material there. It's comfy, man. 
it's good. It's a medium traction. It's it's pretty much what I'd be looking for when it comes to, to G10. Nothing fancy. A little bit of uh, visual texture here, which is good. Um, the color accents around the pivot, you can see we have red and then a red backspacer. There is also a blue option available. And one more thing about scales, which is really neat. So when it comes to the scales, you're going to get G10 handle scales with the knife if you order it now. But because the, the operation is fully funded and it's gone to, I think, like 130% of the original funding, you can also purchase Jade G10 scales for this for an extra $15. And it wouldn't be Jade G10 on the knife. It'll actually be an extra set of scales that you can swap out. So you could writ dye them whatever color you want. If I do it, it'll be purple. <laughs> It'll be purple or maybe even blue to match. I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure exactly what I would do now now that I think about it But the point is that you'll have an extra set of scales for just 15 bucks Which is pretty neat and I think there's a potential if it makes a little bit more money to have a carbon fiber option So definitely check that out if you go over to um, And I just realized it's been 11 minutes and I didn't open and close the knife yet So I'm gonna have to insert some stuff because yeah ridiculous, right? <laughs> Um, so we have that going on with the scales. All right, moving on to the very back, let's take a look. Here is the pocket clip. The pocket clip is sort of a bland, no-nonsense, simple clip, but it works. You know, it, it isn't anything visually exciting, um, but I don't know, does it need to be? Some people care that it is. Um, personally, I look for something that's a little bit more functional, and this is a functional clip. And there's one touch on this knife that I really, really like when it comes to the clip. So this is a reversible tip-up clip, and you can see just this small, tiny little groove, and there's already a body screw in here. Um, and I'm not sure if this is actually a support screw or just for show, just to, to plug the hole if the clip isn't on this side. But that said, I mean, you can see just how simple and seamless it is to, to rotate that. And it doesn't, this little gap here doesn't uh, disrupt the lines of the knife the way, let me see if I have it, you know, and these filler tabs, you know, on, on ZTs and on a bunch of knives are clever in that, you know, they, they become an incorporated in the design of the knife, but something like this that just makes it very minimal. So you don't even have something like that jutting out. It, it's smart. And I really like that about it. All right. <laughs> So now that we've gone through all that, let's talk about the most important part of the knife that I just failed to even mention until now. The action. The action is, okay, maybe not the most important, like how it cuts, blah, 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 right? But we want fidget factor. We're talking about button locks, manual button locks. That's like the most fun aspect of it. And now for 30 seconds of nonstop, unadulterated Solaris action. All right. This thing is ridiculous. All right. I reviewed the Protec Malibu a week or so ago, and I really, really think this is a great knife, guys. The Malibu is, it's a fantastic knife. I called it a little bit boring because honestly, I think it's a little bit boring. It doesn't mean it's not a great knife. The action on the Malibu is, and, and that was stupid, but all right. Action on the Malibu is ridiculous. We know that if you've watched a video on it, you know that this is just as good. Right, and it has some things going for it. It's a heavier blade, so yeah. I mean, it's going to drop easier, but man, it's just done really well. Done really, really well. Super, super sturdy. Really, really nice and just drop shutty. And you can use the flipper, but honestly, there's something about the thumb stud that, yeah. I mean, I would almost consider doing a flipper delete if this were my knife. And maybe you'd lose. No, I don't really think you'd lose much because I would, wouldn't really be using this guard anyway. So, I don't know, maybe a future version of the knife, maybe a flipper delete. But as it is, the action is just ridiculous. And again, I mean, it's, it's something that really puts this thing over the top, especially when we talk about the price point. Now let's get to that. 80 bucks. $80 knife. 14C28N, so I mean, is that on the higher end of what you might get 14C28N for? Sure. 
but I mean, this is a pretty new kind of thing here. You know, it's, it's not a mass produced knife at all yet. It's going to be very limited to get in on it at that price. Um, honestly, guys, I think that it's super cool. I think that it's fair. I try on this channel to be as objective as possible. And like I said earlier, I was really hoping when I unboxed this that it didn't suck because it would have it would have been really a terrible experience for me to to have to do a negative review about um <laughs> about a, a knife that's from a friend of mine and that I really wanted to be good. And I'm just thankful that I don't have to do that because this thing is is pretty darn awesome. Um like I said, I'm going to be ordering one now that I've gotten it in hand. So I'm very pumped about that. And the fact that it's fully funded means I'll actually get it, which is even cooler. And and yeah, I just, I think the value is there. I think if you wanted to use this as a collection piece, you could. If you wanted to use this as a work knife, you definitely could. If you just want a, uh, a really nice full-size folder that you can just play with all day, you could. So and if you want all three of those things, maybe like me, then this is definitely going to be the one for you. And like I said with the Malibu, Malibu is a great knife. And if you're a button lock fan, a manual button lock fan, there aren't that many of them out there that are really great. But the Malibu as company, I mean, this knife, as far as the action goes and as far as the mechanism goes, it's just as good as a Malibu. So, I mean, can't really say anything better about it than that, right? So again, congratulations, David Blade Banter. It's really awesome. Link to that Kickstarter if you haven't already checked it out and you're interested, head over that way. Um, I mean, I don't know what else to say, guys. I'm pretty pumped about it. Thanks very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Any other questions, comments, complaints, suggestions, let me know. All right, thanks again. Have a good one.